congregation that we have here at the church. If only you could see the way I see it. <laughs> we have those that are fighting for their salvation because of something that happened this last week. They believe that somehow their salvation might have been crushed and they need to try again because somehow something is more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. That sin somehow is greater than what Christ did for them on the cross. Then we have others that are sitting in here saying, I, I got saved back when I was five. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm good. <laughs> Not really worried about what they did this week. Not seeking the Lord's face at all <clears throat> to see if they still in right standing with the Lord. It is amazing, guys. It really is amazing. I know this one thing, God loves you all. He loves you all. And it takes faith to please him. Faith in what he did on the cross. Faith that he can overcome anything and everything that you're going to do. Oh, praise God. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis. <laughs> Oh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 18. I have to find it myself. 18 what, man? Chapter 18, just chapter 18. Okay. Oh, praise the Lord. Sit down over there. Mm. Has it been a good week? Yes. 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 Praise God. Thank you all for coming out and helping out with the road cleanup. I do appreciate it. Anybody sore this morning? A little bit? No? One or two? All right. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody got off tomorrow? Those soreness people we got off tomorrow? Are you? Yay! Get some rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knew what he was doing putting that Monday off right there. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 18. There's so much. Man. We're going to go ahead and start. I believe with verse 1. Is that what I got up there, son? Okay. Coming out of King James this morning, it says, The Lord appeared unto him in the plains of uh, Mamre, and he sat in a tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, for thy, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Interesting. Pray with me over this message, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I've come to you today, Lord God, to ask that you would have your way in this service. Lord Jesus, I need you this morning, God. Oh, Holy Spirit, we need you here today. God, I pray that you would have your way, Lord God. Come down and be with your people, God. Be amidst the hearts of the folks here today. Oh, God, your church, Lord God, we, your bride, call out to you, asking you, God, to come and be with us today, Lord God. We need you here in this place. Oh, Lord Jesus, for without you, Lord, we are lost. Without you, Lord God, this is pointless, Lord. God, we need you here, God. Have your way in this service today, God. Do all that you want to do, Lord God. We turn it over to you, God. We lay this service at your feet. Do with it what you want, God. Oh, please anoint this thing. Be all in this, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So Abraham looks up and he sees what many believe is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, God, walking on this earth 
the right, mighty right hand, mighty right arm of God. However you want to read that. Different translations put it differently. But there's three men, two angels specifically, and the Lord. However you, whatever title or name you want to put on the Lord. But there's two angels in the Lord, and they're, they're passing by. And Abraham is sitting in his tent in the heat of the day in the doorway. Oh, it's too hot to sit inside. You ever been in that situation? It's too hot to sit outside. It's too hot to sit inside. But something about standing in the doorway where there's actually a little breeze blowing because the, the inside of the house and the inside of the tent is trying to get right with the outside. And anyways, there's a, a bit of a breeze if you stand in the doorway. We, we went and worked on some stuff at my mother-in-law's house uh, yesterday and my son kept getting caught right in the doorway. There was a fan blowing and he would get right in front of that fan and stand in the doorway. Anyhow, it was hot and we were working in the room we were at. I kept having to say, son, move. Get out the doorway. Go get some air. Anyhow, so I understand this. Abraham was sitting in the doorway. It was hot. And he sees the Lord passing by. And he cries out to the Lord and he says, please stop. Please. Hold on here just a second. Please wait. And spend some time with me. You know, is there any scripture that you can think of in, in the Bible, all my Bible scholars here today, where somebody cried out to God and said, please stay with me just a few minutes. And God said, no, I don't have time for you. But instead, if you, if you see, it's just like this. Abraham presented his case, please stay. I'll get some water and we'll wash your feet. I'll, I'll go and get my wife to draw up some food and I'll, I'll kill the, the, the meat and we'll get it and we'll feed you and you'll be comforted and then you can go on about doing whatever it is you were doing Amen. and in the midst of that the Lord said okay I'll spend some time with Amen. you I'll stop right here in the middle of whatever I'm doing and I'll spend some time with you Amen. oh isn't it great God, yeah. isn't it glorious Yes. God is the God of the universe. He has so much to look after. He has so many people calling his name. And yet, when we cry out to him, he doesn't say, I'm too busy. I can't make it. I've got to be here at this place at this point at this time. You, you hold me up. I got to go. No, he says, okay. I'll spend time with you. I'll stop what I'm doing to be with you. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a great God we serve. Yes. Let that sit with you this morning. If you cry out to God earnestly, longing to be with him, he will answer you. And he will spend time with you. All you got to do is ask. We move on throughout scripture and they get him some food and the angels eventually get up go ahead son give me that, that next set of scripture if you will the angels eventually get up and they they get done they, they talk they talk about Sarah getting ready to have a child there's some laughter going on anyways it's a great scripture if you read it Sarah was beyond her years from being able to have ch uh, children. If anybody understands this, when you get to a certain age, women, they, they get beyond their years to be able to have children. And men too. <laughs> and Sarah laughed. She said, I'm old. And plus my husband's even older. <laughs> How's this going to be? Anyhow, God worked a miracle in her life. Anyhow, we get to verse 16. If you would jump to me into it with verse 16. After these guys get done eating and telling uh, Abraham and Sarah about what's going to happen in their life. It says, and the men rose up from thence and they looked towards Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, again, this is one of the three, two angels and the Lord, the Lord was there. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. 
For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. You know, Abraham was expected to have a child. God had already told him this. And in the midst of this prophecy that the Lord had already told him, he messes up. Sarah messes up. She says, well, God said, you're going to have a child. This ain't nothing about me. So there's this lady that she works for me, my handmaiden. She's my servant. Go on ahead and marry her. Maybe she'll give you a child. You'll have a son, and that's what the Lord's talking about. <coughs> I want you to understand, his name was Ishmael. Ishmael had already been born in this scripture where we're at right now today. In this chapter 18. The Lord visits Abraham. He's getting ready to go in the midst of getting ready to wipe out Sodom. Abraham has completely messed up the promise of God. I mean completely. So much so that the world will never be the same. Even to this very day. If you don't understand, ask me after service. And in the midst of this promise that Abraham is, is waiting on, that Sarah is now waiting on, God visits them. And does he come and throw judgment on them? Does he come and throw ridicule on them? Does he come and bring up, listen, I told you I was going to do this thing, but you don't went and messed this all up, so here's what I'm going to do with you. I'm done with you. I'm going to go do this promise for somebody else. No, he doesn't even mention it. He doesn't even mention it. God passes by in the midst of Abraham not doing what God said he was going to do. In the midst of what we could say is Abraham's sin, it was right there with him. The boy's name was Ishmael. God didn't come by and say, oh, is this your sin right here? No. He comes by he spends time with them. And then he reveals his plans and even gives him a blessing. Should I tell Abraham what I'm going to do? Because you know he's going. He, you see God talking to the angels, just sitting there chatting up like it's no big deal. The Lord has seen the end from the beginning. So it's already something that he knows. When God gives you a promise, when God tells you what's going to happen, when he speaks into your life and says, I'm going to do this for you, it's something he's already seen. Like you guys telling a story from when you were a child, a, a great, wonderful, I don't know, Thanksgiving meal at the time you, you know, about burnt your house to the ground and mom and dad didn't know about it or whatever. Some crazy story. That's how the Lord tells us his story. It's our future he's talking about, but he's already seen it. And so he can say it with such certainty because he's already seen it. It says, the Bible says, I know the end from the beginning. Amen. That's what he says. So when he speaks to you, he can speak with such certainty. No wonder when Jesus came and walked on the earth and he, he walked and people said, who talks like this man? He, he says things that we don't even comprehend. He speaks like one who has authority. Yeah, because Jesus was like, I've seen it. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I've already been there. He can kick back with such confidence. Like, don't you know this was the plan? It's always been the plan. I've been seeing the plan. Now I'm putting the plan in place. Anyhow, he comes and says, Abraham's going to be such a great nation. A mighty nation. And then he talks about his descendants, how they're going to be good with their judgment and with their justice. All oh, that God would stop by and give you such a blessing in your life. But he has. But he has. There's not one of you today that God has stopped by and cast such judgment on you and to say that you're no longer mine, you're no longer worthy, depart from me, I never knew you. No. He's given you life. Yeah. He's given you tomorrow, another day. He's given you this service right yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, to get it right one more time. 
with the Lord. Anyhow, Abraham gets told the plan. The plan is to go to Sodom and burn it to the ground. In the meantime, Abraham's nephew Lot is living there. Abraham flips out. Lord, are you going to seriously burn the righteous and the wicked together? Knowing that Lot is living over there. Hoping that Lot is still doing what he's supposed to be doing. Hoping that Lot is still living a righteous life before God. Counting on his family to do the right thing, even though he hasn't seen them in a long time. He's living over there in Sodom. They parted ways. So he says, are you going to you going to destroy them both? What if there's what if there's 50? You're going to destroy the 50? The Lord's like, no. What if there's 40? No. What if there's and he keeps counting all the way down. And Abraham finally gets down to 10. Lord, if there's 10, if there's just 10 righteous, we can destroy the city if there's just 10 righteous. And finally the Lord's like, no. If there's 10 righteous people, I'll spare this place. And then the Lord goes on. That's important. Then the Lord goes on. Move with me to chapter 19, if you would, please. It says, and there came two angels, verse 1, to Sodom at evening, evening or evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, unto your servant's house, and tarry all night, and Wash your feet, and uh, ye shall rise up early and go on your way. And they said, Nay. <laughs> they said, Nay. But we will abide in the streets all night. And he pressed upon them greatly. And they turned in unto him and entered unto his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down some men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. <clears throat> they just didn't want to have a conversation with the folks trying to keep this PG. They wanted to know them. These two angels showed up in the city and Lot immediately recognized who they were. As the church, if the Lord or his messenger were to show up, we should immediately recognize when they walk in the door. Our spirit should identify with their spirit. Our spirit should recognize, hey, something different here. The Lord's trying to send me a message. The Lord's trying to speak. The Lord's trying to do something. I need to get up and pay attention. Lot does that. He urges these people. And yet, once again, here we see the messengers of the Lord. We're going to stay out all night, but upon the urging, please come spend time with me. Please come stay with me. Their prayer is answered. And these men come and stay. And the city is so wicked that it says men young and old alike Listen, we like to get up here and say, oh, it's those millennials. It's that younger generation. It's that next generation. I don't understand this new generation coming up. I don't get it. The Bible said it was young and old alike. They were wicked. And it puts it on the men. Oh, men, come on. I know last week we stepped on your toes. Men, God's calling on you to step up and do what you're supposed to do. They wanted them to bring the angels out. They wanted Lot to bring the angels out so that they could know them in a marital status, in a, in a biblical sense, as some would say. It says in verse 6, And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray thee, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them unto you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For 
Therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn. He will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore unto the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Listen, Lot did everything he knew to, to lessen the situation. You ever try to step into the middle of a situation? You ever step in and think, man, I can really help right here. Let me step in with a kind word or an alternate idea or maybe a compromise. We can figure something out. And when you get in that situation immediately, I shouldn't have stepped in this situation. I shouldn't be here. I should have opened my mouth. I should have kept my mouth shut. And now I'm in it. Oh, no. Yeah, Lot, Lot stepped in. He offered a compromise. It was a terrible compromise. But it was better than what they were trying to do according to Lot's idea of sinning against the Lord. He was putting things on a, on a pedestal and he was like, well, at least there'll be some natural things and not some unnatural things. And He was trying to get it figured out. He was doing the best he could. Sacrificing his family for the defense of the Lord's messengers. I mean, he was doing all he could do. You got to give him some credit there. But it was breath wasted on wicked generation. We are living in a wicked generation, church. There is wickedness all around us. And it's getting worse and worse by the day. Do your best in the midst of this. Speak. Speak the truth in love. But expect God to come through and do what he needs to do. Sodom was getting ready to burn to the ground. The Bible says that this earth is getting ready to burn to the ground. Peter, I believe it's 2 Peter chapter 3, says this earth was destroyed by a flood, but it's being stored up until the day of judgment when God will burn it to the ground. Pastor James Burton. We're living in that generation, folks. The whole world is echoing the, the habits of Sodom. The whole world. Lot was living in the midst of it. If you can find a place on this earth that you can go that you're not surrounded by sinners and wickedness, let me know. I'll buy some property as your neighbor. Mm -hmm. But if there's two of us there, we might not get along and wickedness will raise its ugly heads. I mean, that's just how it is. Lot was living in the midst of all this. It says in verse 10, but the men put their hand, put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said to Lot, hast thou any besides son-in-laws and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. I want to let you know that there is something in heaven. I haven't seen it. I can only imagine it, and I don't want to give you a false imagination. So I'll give you what I know. You imagine it your way. There's something in heaven that when the sins pile up to a certain amount, they get so high or so full. I don't know if it's a jar, a container, a, 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 a heap. I don't know if there's a, a, a balance, and when the balance tips, whatever it is, but when the sin gets so great, God can't take it anymore. No matter in this specific version, in this specific story, the Lord steps out and he says, I'm coming to see for myself if Sodom is as wicked as, as the cries that have reached heaven tell me they are. The Lord came to look at it with his own eyes. Wow. Wow. But you know, there's also those same scales or balance or a pile or a heap or a jar or something in heaven. That when your prayers get stored up, they eventually come to God's attention as well. And God has to step out and see what's going on. Oh, come on. God has to step out and say, your prayers, oh Cornelius, your prayers have come up to the Lord. 
And the Lord has done sent me to come see you. Come on, if you don't believe it, go to Acts and see. Don't give up on your prayers. Amen. Don't stop praying. Don't stop living right. Don't stop putting those deposits in heaven. Oh, because one of these days, those prayers are going to get so piled up. The Lord's going to finally say, my gosh, somebody go check it out. These prayers are getting so big. We ain't got enough room. Somebody get these prayers taken care of. And the Lord will send an angel if he has to. That's what he did for Cornelius. To tell you what to do. Come send for Peter. Tell him to come give you the gospel. Your prayers have done come up before the Lord. Don't let your wickedness come up before the Lord. Get that straight with God. Yeah. The angels were going to destroy this place. They told him, they told Lot, go, go to your family. Tell everybody. Anybody here got unsaved family? Oh, yeah. I do, I'm keeping my hand raised. Mm -hmm. Anybody here have unsaved family that you've told about the gospel that you've given them, the gospel of Jesus Christ? And they've done nothing to accept it? Yeah, that's sad. Lot went and told his, his sons-in-law, there was at least two of them, that, hey, you gotta get out of here, the, the city's gonna be destroyed. And it says they, they thought he was joking. There was kind of a laughter, the Bible used the word mock, they thought he was mocking. He was joking, it wasn't a big deal. They didn't do anything about it. How many years on this earth have we been proclaiming that judgment is coming upon this earth? We are getting so very close that there are things that are going to happen in the seven year tribulation that the shadows are being cast right now. You know the judgment is coming because you see, you can see things getting prepared for that seven years. You think, oh my gosh, we're so close, the shadows. It's being cast right here. Amen. The time is getting, oh, so very close. And yet you tell people, hey, the rapture is coming, the judgment is coming, you better be ready. God is coming. Oh. Y'all been saying that for a couple thousand years, ain't you? Grandma said it, Mama said it, now you're saying it. I got plenty of time. Those fellows got left behind at Sodom. They didn't come out with a lot. They got destroyed. Yeah. They thought Lot was joking. And you know, these two angels come in. Uh, I'll paraphrase the rest of it. If you want to, please go on and read the, the rest of at least that story in chapter 19. It, the, the whole chapter is not about this. But they gather things together. And they're, they're wasting their time. They're taking their time. As the evening is growing dark, this seems to have happened all in one night. And it's getting close to sunrise, and the angels say, you've got to get out now. Time is getting so close. You've got to get out now. And they're dilly-dallying, fiddle-farting, whatever word you want to use. They're... I want to talk to the men for a second. You ever been ready to go on a trip, and you're telling your wife, we're going to leave at this time? <laughs> And next thing you know, she's still packing a bag or, I don't know, sweeping up something or, or oh, I just got to do this one more thing. I just one more, I, I got to check on this one more thing. You're like, We're leaving in three minutes. What are you doing? I just got this one more. We are leaving in three minutes and you are just now getting in the shower. What are you doing? Good job, men. I'm not saying amen. Just giggle or your breath and keep going. Good job. Not that any of us know what I'm talking about. But they were, they were doing this thing. They were not ready. They were told, we're going to destroy the city. Get out. And yet they were still there all night long. <clears throat> Until the Bible says, finally, the angels grabbed them by the hand. Grabbed them by the hand and pulled them out of the city. Yanked them out of the city. And they said, we can't destroy this place until we get you out. We can't do nothing to that place while you're still there, he goes down there. Come on, you're not getting this this morning. God knew exactly how many people were going to be saved out of, out of Sodom. God knew exactly how many angels to send. He sent two angels, which is two arms, which is 
uh, two arms apiece, which is four arms total, which is four hands, the said Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. Mm -hmm. One Lot, one wife, one angel, one daughter, and the other daughter, and another angel. Mm -hmm. Four people came up out of that place. God sent two angels. Mm -hmm. Imagine if God knew only four of them were allowed. He told Abraham, if there was ten, I'll save the city. He bargained all the way down to ten. I thought, why didn't Abraham bargain all the way down to one? He stopped at 10. In my thought, he must have known Lot's family because Lot went to some son-in-laws. He must have known that maybe there was at least 10 of them. So Abraham bargained all the way down to where he thought, all right, if Lot and all his kids are doing right, there's 10 of them. It's my thoughts now. You guys decide on your own. Only four of them left that place. Mm -hmm. God sent two angels. He knew exactly how many was going to come out. And the angel said, as long as you are there, come on, rapture of the church, as long as you are there, we can do nothing. We got to get you out so we can follow what the Lord says and destroy this city. Amen. As long as the church is here, the tribulation is, is getting closer and closer, but it's not quite there yet. The rapture of the church is coming, folks. And eventually, God is going to harpazo, snatch you out. Yank you out, pull you out, grab you by the hand, get out! You're going to be out of this place. It says, after they got him out, fire and brimstone came down and destroyed, destroyed the city, it destroyed the plants, it destroyed everything. Commentators liken it to an atomic bomb going off. It just, it just, boom, everything was gone. And it, and it burned and burned and burned and burned. So much so when you get to the end of this story, Abraham gets up. We get back to Abraham. And he runs out, it says, to where he was standing in the presence of the Lord. He goes back to that place where he knows he can find God. Oh, come on, get that this morning. He goes back to that place where he knows Sunday morning at my church in the altar where I can find God. Amen. He runs back to the place where he was standing in the presence of the Lord. And he looks out and he sees the smoke rising up out of Sodom. Oh, praise God. Like a furnace, it says. Wow. Mm. God's going to cast that same judgment on this earth. We are this close. If I could yank you out of the woods, only God can get you out. Amen. And it's only through a relationship with him that you can get out of this place. Elsewise, you're going to be stuck here in the midst of that. And it's beautiful that it says that God answered Abraham's prayer to save Lot. And in that whole that whole story of Abraham saying, if there's 50, we can save the city. If there's 40, what about if there's 30? What about if there's... He gets all the way down to 10. God knew he was really just asking about Lot and his family. Isn't it wonderful that in your prayers towards the Lord, you can't fool him at all? God knows exactly what it is you're really praying about. Whether it's for selfish reasons, whether it's for somebody else, whether it's out of fear. Oh, you might be able to pray the best prayer and speak the best faith. Oh, Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. And he's just as afraid and as scared and as worried and as anxious inside your soul. God knows it. And so when he answers your prayer, he gives you peace because that's what you need. Praise God, we have a God that knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. Abraham was bargaining for the city, but really he was just bargaining for Lot. That's really who he was caring about. It says God answered Abraham's prayer for Lot. Save Lot and his family. Listen, folks, there's a time that is coming. That's right. I, I stand here as a messenger of the Lord. Again, go to Revelation. Read the Bible, look it up. Come on Wednesday night. <clears throat> Understand. I stand here as a messenger of the Lord to tell you that the time is drawing short telling you to get right with God. Listen, God didn't come into Sodom. God didn't send the angels into Sodom and have, have, have the angels call out 
Lot sinned, his wife sinned, his kids sinned. No, he sent them in there with a mission. He said, listen, we're going to destroy this place, and I want you to go to your family and anybody else. Tell them we got to go. Get them and get them out of here. That's your mission, church. That's our mission. You can go ahead and put those lights if you want to. Your mission is to get folks to come with you. On Wednesday nights, we say we're trying to decrease the population of hell and increase the population Amen. of heaven. Amen. That's what we say we're trying to do as we teach the book of Revelation every Wednesday night. 7.30 in Wednesday night. Make sure you come up there. This story assumes a few things. Abraham assumed a few things. He bargained for uh, 10 people, assuming there was 10 worth saving. Only four got out. The angels stopped by the city. Lot recognized him. We can assume Lot was right with the Lord. He was sitting at the city gate in the middle of wickedness. But as soon as he, he saw the angels of the Lord, he recognized them immediately. He had enough of whatever was going on inside of him to be able to recognize men of God. I'm going to give you a quick little secret. If you think only perfect, sinless people are going to get to heaven, <laughs> you've missed it. If you think only perfect, sinless people are going to get to heaven, you miss it. There was only one perfect. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. And the good thing is that his blood covers a multitude of sins. A multitude of sins. The Bible makes it very clear that we must call on him. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We must confess with our mouth. We must believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. There are a few musts in this relationship of salvation. When I'm a strong believer, if God comes back the day that I'm on the interstate, I'll still be able to make it to heaven. <laughs> Even if I'm using my horn to tell people Jesus loves them. <laughs> I'm all here. Now there's a long laundry list of things, multiple places in the Bible. And it says, these things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Oh, and if you don't know that list, go see our wonderful Sunday school teacher and he'll tell you where those lists are. There's at least three places in the Bible that makes it very specific and very clear. These things. I want to be on that list. Don't be on that list. If you're on that list, get off that list.